Welcome and you are listening to another episode of 30 and 30 from Keep the Change, keepthechange.co.nz. Money Mail lessons every Friday at 9am. If you'd like to contribute in terms of feedback or a content suggestion, then feel free to get in touch. Look at keepthechange.co.nz. Today we're going to be talking about investing into yourself. This was a, a, a topic that was unfamiliar to me as such earlier on in my life and as I stepped more into my development, well no, as I stopped, stepped more into my, my business journey and whatnot, I realised how I need to develop myself further and I don't think it should take you to start a business to understand this and this is why often in the Keep the Change lessons I will be saying to you what are you learning and how are you developing yourself because I now think and realise that the more we become valuable, the more we earn and the easier life becomes and the faster things start to move and the more momentum we get. And that starts with us and it starts with us developing our capabilities, increasing the amount of things that we have knowledge about, increasing our value to our bosses, to our employers, to our friends, to our networks and to all of those people around us, our families, our communities and trying to figure out how we can become more valuable as a, a person and as a being. Now, as I started to study successful people and athletes and people doing well, I realized how much they were actually investing into themselves. And it might be working out in the gym. It could be understanding how to sharpen your mind up a little bit. It could be understanding how to be the best employee at your job, how to bring some revenue into your business so that they like you even more, they never want you to leave and then they pay you to do that. Understanding how to be uh, a time saver for your boss or your manager and they're going to love you for that because there's one thing that people cannot get back and that is time. So if you can find ways to save people time, they will appreciate you. If you can help them move to their goals faster, they will value you more than somebody who just turns up and thinks about themselves and their own goals. So pro tip, start to think about people around you and whether you can help them achieve things. If you start to look at the world where you want to help other people rather than just helping your, other, uh, your own self, you will find that other opportunities will start to come to you and people will find you more valuable to have in their network. Now, to go back to the start of my development journey, I was always sort of hungry and keen to learn more and mum would say, you know, you'd come home from school and you were, no, can't go there, I've got to do my homework and I'm just an out and out fucking geek by the sounds of it, according to my mum, right? But that's just who I am. So I've probably got an unfair advantage in that. I'm sitting here on a Sunday recording this for you. Is anything going to come of it? I don't really know. Uh, but hopefully some of you learn from this and you take some actions and one day you you help me in return somehow, some way, or you know, I don't even expect that, but if it happens, that'll be outstanding and it'll fill my cup up and I'll be pretty stoked and I'll know that uh, I've lived into my purpose of helping other people out there and that, that really resonates with me. So you know, I don't know where this is going to go to and often when we're doing our own development, we don't know where it's going to go to either and you can kind of go, what's the point of this? What's the point of that extra rep? What's the point of reading this book? What's the point of making some affirmations? What's the point of writing down things that I'm grateful for? What's the point of setting goals? You know, all of that shit. Your job is to find out what the point of it is. Not to just query it, but to actually figure it out for yourself because we're all different in different ways. Now, one of the things that I would do was stack YouTube videos and I would listen to successful people and inspirational type videos and instead of listening to music, I would listen to people talk and I would start to learn from them and I would save them and I would go back and listen again and I still do this and I've been doing this now for over 10 years. And I remember in my job, my boss came past and he said, what are you listening to? And I said, oh, I'm, um, I'm listening to a motivational video and he looked at me and said, oh, I didn't think you'd be into that stuff. And I finally only really clicked why the other day and now that I've been out of there, that environment for over five years, they were trying, in my, this is my opinion, I could be wrong, they were trying to hire people that weren't aspirational because they don't want them to leave because they want them to carry on building out their future, their vision and their goals. Now here I was a young guy sitting there listening to YouTube videos going, 
like I'm keen to conquer the world at some stage. Ah, I'm trying to fire myself up. And he's going, whoa, 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 whoa. Pull yourself back from that, mate. I don't want to see you doing that. I want to see you sit here for the next 10 years. Maybe maybe he didn't. You know, He would have wanted to see me progress in some way, probably. But you know, I think it was an eye-opener for him. He was going, oh, well, we've got this higher wrong. This guy wants to go and do more. He's obviously driven, and he's aspirational, and he's, he's chasing motivation, and we're going to lose him at some stage. But um, that, that's exactly what happened for him. So, you know, that's, that's a, an example of where you have to be careful what environment you're in. Are you around people, friends, family, workmates, communities that actually want to see you grow? If you want to grow, but you're not around people that want to see you grow, you've got to change your, env- change your environment to change your results. It's one of my favorite sayings. If, sh- if, if life's not working for you at one stage or it just feel like it's just all going the wrong way, change your environment for a bit and then notice how your results change. Remember that. Change your environment, change your results. It could be, just be that you're having an absolute shit day. Just get up and remove yourself from the environment and change it. Go and work in a different um, room for a bit. Go and sleep on the couch for three hours rather than sitting there wondering why can't I get to sleep at night. Change your environment to change your results. Now, you have to find an environment that's going to help you become the person you want to be. And obviously me staying in that role with the goals that I had and the things that I wanted to do and going out there and having a crack for myself, that wasn't the right environment to help me get to the places that I wanted to go. And we've already discussed how eventually I jumped from the building to use that analogy and I waited for my parachute to open and it's fair to say now that I'm uh, out there gliding in the air and, and have a nice parachute above me and so it all worked out pretty well. But uh, remember, we have to stay sharp because at any time someone could try and shoot your parachute down or it could have a tear in it and you've got to then figure out how to navigate a torn parachute. But that is the game that we call life. So you know, what are you doing to develop yourself? And over the last year... For instance, I've uh, invested in a ring to, sl- uh, to track my sleep and learn more about myself in that area. It tells me when I'm really fired up for the day. And I use those days where I'll write more content, I'll do more content, I'm a lot more ready for the world and I'll tackle some of the big things that are going on. Sometimes it tells me that I'm just flat as and I can feel it and I just go, right, I need to reshape or think about what I'm doing in these days and really it just as a maximizer myself I figure out how to use those days to my advantage the most. Um, Another thing that I've done I got a personal trainer because I'd hurt my back a number of years ago and I just tried to carry on and keep going and one of the first things he said mate is we're not going to be lifting weights we're going to be teaching you how to stretch and I'm like for fuck's sake I'm so non-flexible inflexible I think the word might be and uh, that's where it started for me. And that was a year journey before I could actually do some of the, the stretches that he was suggesting that I do. And then I could get into lifting some of the weights or correcting some of the positions and techniques in which I was lifting weights in. Now, that's me having to hand over money to somebody else who has more knowledge than me to help me develop myself because the path that I was going down wasn't actually developing myself. If anything, it was ruining it. Now, to go back a number of years before that, I'd always been keen on development in terms of um, how could I eat healthier, how could I be healthier, how could I think clearer and all these different types of things and I was lucky to have a mate who was playing in the sevens and he gave me one of his older training books at one stage and was like, here you go mate, you want, might want to try some of these exercises to get fit for soccer and I was just sitting there like devouring this thing going, right, which exercise could, could I go and have a crack at and I'd turn up to pre-season for football absolutely fit as shit because I'd already been doing these things months out before getting to our pre-season um, and then I'm looking at the nutrition side of it going wow I didn't know that you're supposed to eat like this and that you could have this thing and cherry tart will help you sleep at night and all these different things uh, I don't know anything about this I just haven't had that development now there is no way that you're going to have all of the information that you need but you've got to then go and find out okay if there's an area of your life that you want to improve where am I going to go and find and seek some information from to in order for me to do that now I think one of the simplest ways you can do that is to find people who are successful or have been there and done it before you and go and ask them. I had an email on Friday from a young guy saying, I'm thinking about going out on my own and becoming a chartered accountant. Where do I start? And now that I'm deep into the journey, it's actually really hard to answer that because I've got five years of opinion or things to tell this person. And I sat there and was like, wow, 
I, I don't even know how to type an email back to this person. I really need to have a phone call with them or I need to make them a podcast and give it to him and then give it to other people because there's just way too much there. But I said, look, mate, the number one thing is that if you're hungry and you want to make it happen, make it happen. Just get started and you'll figure it out as you go. It's, it's the most simplest advice. But often when we start things, we figure it out as we go. And, you know, you would have had to go to school for the first day at some stage. And you'd look back at that and it's just something that happened. But at one stage, that would have been the scariest day of your life. Same thing at high school, same thing at uni, same thing at your job, whatever you went to. It's unfamiliar. So you're thinking, how the fuck am I going to know what to do? You're not. That's the whole point. But you've just got to get started and then figure it out as you go. So whatever it is that you're learning about, whether it's yoga, whether it's how to meditate, whether it is how to become more valuable, how to get a pay rise, you're not supposed to know the answers yet. That's why you're looking for that. So go and find someone who are, that can help you with that and then just get started and get on that path to learning. Oh, what 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 should I invest into? Well, you know, who, who knows? Um, that's going to be different for everyone. Go and find some content, go and find some education, go and find someone who's invested and, and see if you can get some knowledge from them. So ask and you shall, they shall receive, I think is the quote from the Bible maybe. And it's something that we're, we're very easy to forget. Uh, as humans, we're, it can be very easy to forget just to ask and, and go after some of that development in areas where you are lacking. Now, what else have I done in terms of my development? I guess when I started a business, for instance, I realized, fuck, I know very little about this like I knew a lot from being an accountant and studying business and stuff but the real world is never really what you learn in your textbooks it's completely different and you've got to get out there and basically I call it like k's under feet if you're running for a marathon or a half marathon you want to get some k's under feet and that's the stuff that's actually going to give you real world experience you'll hear about people saying oh how was it how was it to be back at playing rugby oh you know I wasn't very match fit um, because you've got to get yourself in the arena to start getting some K's under your feet, to start actually building some experience up in that position. So I needed to go out there in terms of business and I needed to figure out, okay, how does this work and who can I study and uh, who can I get closer to and is it going to cost me some money and where, where do I even start? And really, if I just looked at that whole picture, I'm going, this is too hard, I don't know, like I should just shell up and just, you know, I'll just sit here. And I didn't do that. So I went out networking and I signed up for different groups to go and be a part of and learn from different people. I had different meetings. I asked questions. I read, I read, I read. I watched and I learned and I practiced things. I practiced Facebook marketing, for instance. I was having a crack and I'd find mates who were already been doing it and that were good at it. And I'm going, what are you doing? What, 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 what can I see here? Oh, have you got this installed? No, what's that? And so I was just having to learn and learn at a rate of knots to ensure that I didn't have to keep house sitting or keep living at home uh, or not be able to afford my rent. I was fucking punching back. I was fighting back so that I could actually turn my life around and actually get on the front foot because I was just going backwards and backwards um, because I, I didn't know a number of things that I needed to know. And that's why you'll hear so many people say, oh, well, if I knew what I knew now, I would have done this differently because with the benefit of hindsight and experience and wisdom, it's easy to say that. And that's why people say, oh, it's easy for you to say. Well, yeah, it is easy for that person to say because they've fucking been there and done it. They've had a crack at it. They've done it. So, you know, don't, don't use that saying, oh, easy for you to say. You know, maybe use that for yourself. Oh, it's easy for me to say because you've been there and you've done it. Uh, usually, oh, it's easy for you to say as a, as a defensive excuse as to why you couldn't do something that somebody else is. You're already looking for reasons to fail. You're looking for reasons why you can't achieve the things that somebody else has because you've decided that the only reason that they did it is because they had X, Y, and Z. Therefore, it's easy for them to say it. Been that. That's not going to help you. That's not going to solve anything for your life. And it's only really you showing up envy for other people. And we learned from Charlie Munger that that's one thing we want to try and take away from our lives is to envy what other people have because someone will always have more than what we have. Oh, got started there. That was an absolute crack. I can't even remember what I was talking about there for a second. I'm going to have to try and uh, pull myself back. This is what happens when I just sit down and hit record and don't actually have any notes uh, taken to, to structure out these podcasts. But Back to where I was, I was talking about uh, developing myself in terms of business. And then as that went on, it was, okay, the selling thing is quite hard. What can I learn about sales? Why, why can't I, why do I think sales is so, so hard? Because I'd been taught that. And I needed to go back and I needed to actually educate myself on some of these areas that were now important to me. As an accountant working for somebody, it was never important to be good at sales because I didn't really care because it wasn't my business and it wasn't me trying to generate revenue. I'm just like, well, if it happens, it happens, that's sweet. But I wasn't actively going out there and hunting it because A, I hadn't been taught to and B, 
Like it just wasn't it wasn't really my responsibility. That's how I saw it, and I didn't really care, so I wouldn't do that. But now I'm in a different vehicle, and I'm in a different environment, and all of a sudden sales and getting things across the line and explaining things properly, those really did matter. So I had to go back to the start and put some development into that area. To go back to one of the things that I think has really changed my life and really been very beneficial for me in terms of development is before I even quit my job, I was seeking out a mentor and I put a post on LinkedIn and said, hey, I'd be keen to work with a a mentor. And I was looking for who would come back and who would uh, get in touch with me. And I had a few people offer to have a chat and I'm still in contact with those people now. A couple of them are in business and doing very well. Uh, There's a great lady in Australia who had gone right through the accounting sort of ranks and I always keep an eye out for uh, what she's up to and I had a call with her and all of these people were saying the same thing they were like you need to work to your strengths and so I'm writing down like yeah you need to work to your strengths yeah oh, everyone knows that. that that makes heaps of sense and then I got brave enough by about person four that I was talking to and I said hey what the fuck does that mean like how, how do you know what your strengths are and one person said to me oh well um, you know do do the strengths finder and I said well what's the strengths finder is that thing at the gym No, 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 it's an online test where you go through and Gallup have put it together, G-A-L-L-U-P, and you work out what your strengths are and what things you're really good at and start focusing on those and then delegating out the things that are in your blind spots, aka your weaknesses, and just get better at the things you're really good at and surround yourself with people that can do the things you're not so good at. And I thought, oh, okay, gee, that's a good good, good way to look at it. Unfortunately, I can't afford to uh, hire any people that can do the things that I'm not good at. So I'm not at that stage yet, but I could see, I'm like, fuck, there's layers to this because I haven't even done the test. I don't even know what my strengths are, so I don't even know what I'm supposed to be working on. And then this person's telling me to look at your weaknesses as well, which I didn't know what those were at that stage, and then to hire someone that can help you work on those things. And I'm thinking, well, how far behind am I? What's going on here? How, how, how am I nearly 30 and I didn't know about this? So I go on, I do the test, and it pumps up uh, all the things, or there's basically a 1 to 34 of their, their um, strategic, well, no, sorry, not strategic, uh, what would they be called, like characteristic types as such, or um, layers of strengths, and, and it gives you your top five, your top 10, and then right through to 34, and your bottom five are sort of your blind spots, or your weaknesses, or things that are quite tricky for you. So I started with the top five, which were the things that uh, I was naturally better at and that were sort of unique to me and all of us will have a a very different top five and a top 10 and they can change slightly over time but usually they think that um, these things will will hold true for most of our life. So it's the Gallup Strengths Finder if you want to look it up, G-A-L-L-U-P Strengths Finder, you might pay 30 uh, American bucks or something to to do it and there I was, you know, fuck I've got to pay for this, what? This is shit, why do I have to pay? Oh, okay, I'm investing into myself. I'm actually spending some money on developing myself and learning some more about myself. Okay, well, I don't whinge when they say, all right, oh, $36 for two Jaeger bombs, but uh, I do when they say $36 to do an online test to learn something about yourself that might change your, your life. It's weird how we think, right? So I worked through this thing, and then I'm like, okay, well, I don't really understand what any of this means. I'm going to get a, like a coach. So I, then I go on LinkedIn. I said, hey, has anyone uh, done this before? Does anyone do any coaching in this area? Guy gets in touch, absolute champion bloke, who's doing some coaching around uh, the same stuff for people who work at Fonterra. I thought, well, fuck, good enough for Fonterra, good enough for Luke, isn't it? So I tee up some meetings with this bloke, and he says, look, uh, we can go through some monthly meetings, and I can teach you more about these strengths and how to use them, and uh, and, and I'll charge you. And I'm like, oh, fuck, it's going to cost me even more. So now I've done the test, I pay for that, and now this guy's telling me, well, if you want to learn about it, you need to pay, for, you need to pay me for my time. And I'm thinking, okay. But I knew, I'm like, well, I... I'd heard all these people that are saying I'd spend money working on myself, uh, athletes and, and successful people. And I thought, well, like, who, who's going to be more right here, them or me, the way I've been doing things? You know, I, I couldn't really rest on the fact that, no, 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 I reckon I can just figure this stuff out my, for myself because I, I knew nothing about it. And so I wanted to learn from someone that was already teaching other people. Again, I thought, well, if Font here is paying this guy, then Luke probably should too. And it wasn't overly expensive, but it wasn't exactly, you know, I could have been using it to pay my rent. So then I'm going, well, fuck, you know, I shouldn't be, I should be doing this, I should be, should move home and be spending money on this rather than spending money on my rent. So I was now swapping out expenses that ordinarily I thought, well, these are the things I wanted to go to work for so I could live on my own and party up and have fun. And now I'm having to go, fuck, now I need to go back home to save some money so I can spend some money to talk to this random stranger to learn about some strengths. I don't even know what the fuck these are or how I'm going to use them. And that's exactly what I did. So I went through basically all my strengths with this guy. I learned a stack and I realized, okay, if I keep working on these things and keep perfecting them and 
um, figure out how to get people around me that can work on the other side of these things, I'm going to learn a lot more. I'm, I'm going to go a lot further in life. And that's literally what I've been doing for the past six years is, is really leaning on those things. And now when I go into situations and think, okay, this situation is going to require somebody who can win someone over uh, or who can think strategically or who can include people into a group, then those are the types of things that I know are going to be easy for me. Some that can, can communicate, some that can come up with some ideas you know, those are where I've got to step up in, in a group setting and go, hey, I'll, I'll take this one, I can sort it out for us. And where it becomes more powerful is either a business partner or people that you work with and then you understand their strengths and you realise, wow, they're completely different to me. And for me to come up with uh, a name for a podcast, absolutely easy. For my business partner, for instance, he'll be like, oh, um, um, I'll, I'll need to, yeah, I'll need, to, I'll need to think about that. And he'll go away five days later and come back and go, I've got the name. I'm like, fuck, that's too long. Let's just, you know, I'm an activator, do everything quickly. Let, here it is you know, that, that'll be fine, then we'll just carry on. So we've got very contrasting strengths, which is, is a brilliant blend when we're working with clients because they get to see two sets of strengths and then we understand each other's a lot better and we can figure out who's going to be better to do different tasks. And that's when the magic of it really starts to happen. When you learn more about yourself, then you can start to learn more about others as well. Now, I finished up my strengths training with him and then I found a lady uh, along the way that I'd been doing... Uh, I can't remember how I got introduced now, but she's an absolute champion as well. And she was a coach in this space too. And she's someone, she's in Auckland, this guy was in Christchurch. And I'd had some catch-ups with her. And then um, going forward, I've now, I'll say to people, hey, I think you should do this. And I think you should go and speak to this lady to get some more out of it, to really understand it. And one thing that I remember when I was talking to the first guy that I was dealing with, with it, is I said to him, mate, you know, why don't more people do this? You'd think that... You think that this is just this is one of the most valuable things I've done in my life, and you think that everyone should be doing this, you know, should be compulsory in schools. And he said, "Well, have a look at your strengths, and then figure out why you might have just asked that." So I had a look at my strengths, and one of my strengths is to maximize. So I want everything to go from good to great, and I want to get it, and I want to squeeze it, and I want to make sure it's the best thing that it can be. And he goes, "You know, that's why you've come, you've gone great, great that I've got these results, but uh, this isn't enough. I want to learn how to maximize it, so I want to learn how to use them." And then. You know, he said there'll be people that'll go, okay, cool, I got these results. I don't even really know why I did this. And B, there's there's not too much here for me. That was kind of cool to do. And they'll never think about it again. Now, as with anything, there's always downsides to these things. So what he was also showing me is he said, now, you need to be careful, though, because a maximizer, it's never really finished. And a job is, or a project or something could always be better in some way. You'll always look back at things and go, I could have done that better. That's just my nature. And that will probably ring true to a number of you. Or some of you will be like, fuck, I don't even know what this guy's talking about by this stage. It's, just, it's all just you know gobbledygook. But you'll be probably a completely different human and have a completely different strength set. But you'll be just as valuable in your community and your family and your role uh, as I am, but just in a different way. Now, he said, because you know, you're always thinking about how you can maximize things, you will have downsides. Your strengths, if you overplay them, can actually turn into weaknesses as well. And you can, I can do things too quickly, or I can get them started, and people are going, whoa, whoa, whoa slow down, like you're fucking, you're off and you're gone, you've already done seven steps, and I, I don't even know where we're going, and you're just like, nah, you should be right, you know, just jump on board. And sometimes we have to stop and communicate, okay, this is why we're doing this, this is what I can see is going to happen, um, I can kind of see into the pathway that we're going down, and I can see that these are going to be the obstacles I'll get us started, but we're going to need to address these things. So now I'll need to use them to my advantage to actually slow down um, myself and and figure out how can I avoid them from being a weakness. Now, also, you, with self-development and developing yourself, you do run the risk that, again, it, it never kind of ends right because we're always learning. If you look at Warren Buffett, for instance, those guys start their morning by reading because they're always trying to learn what's going on. They're trying to upskill themselves and become more valuable. And you need to be careful that you don't cross the line that, everything in your life becomes about um, developing it and fixing it and making things better because I just don't know if that's actually possible and you know someone who's got some training in psychology and counseling and stuff would have a better understanding of that than I but often you know I can um, go into relationships or situations and just go Whoa, here's six things we need to do just to fucking um, just to you know just to solve it and, and get it back on track and someone's going mate like I just needed you to listen you weren't even listening. You just you just gave me six steps to f- to fix it, and I'm going yeah. Well, just you know, here's the six. Develop yourself. Fucking carry on. Right out. Case closed. Let's go. 
and sometimes people don't need that. So just be careful when you do go down the development path that you don't uh, thrash it down people's throats that don't want it or just because you're right into it doesn't mean that somebody else is and and that's all good too. You know, people and humans, we're all different, right? So, you know, keep your development journey on the path that you want it to be on and don't try and force other people to do things that they don't want to do. That's one of the lessons that I've, I've learned to along the way as well. Now, I think that this is an area where we need to continue to um, lean into and now has never been a better time because we've got such a changing world but we also have access of information from some really, really smart people all across the globe that we can access via the internet. Years and years ago, that wasn't even possible. If you wanted to learn, you're off to the library. And I dug into some statistics and I think it's like 3% of people would actually use the resources in a library. Now, education and information is everywhere now. You don't just have to go to a centralised library. There's podcasts, there's content on social media, there's digital websites, there's blogs, you you know, you name it, you can go and find the information that you need. Now, one thing that I often do is I go and try and find people who have completely polar opposite opinions to me. So say I really like the way, um, let's go political for a second, that national were addressing a topic. I'll go, okay, yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me and I can kind of see why they're doing that and yeah, 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 that makes sense. And then I'll go and find people that absolutely hate national and go, hey, this is um, national's idea, it's a really good idea, eh? But fuck it, like fuck it is, that's ridiculous, and those bloody bastards, and, and and I'll be like, okay, help me understand, help me understand, and actually try and learn from those people and go like, what can they see that I can't see? Because otherwise you run the risk of just seeing the world the way you want to see it, and I'm sure that that's slowly kind of like how we all end up um, being and then teaching the next version of ourselves, i.e. our children and things, but um, I think it's good to go and test your thinking or... I'll go and find people, like I might really like Gary Vee or someone I just saw before, before coming onto this, I saw that Jordan Peterson was coming to New Zealand. I thought, oh, that's bloody, you know, that's really interesting. He'd be a great person to go and speak. And I had a look at the comments and it's just like, this guy's absolutely vile and, uh, you know, I'd rather eat gravel, I think was one of the comments. And I was thinking, fuck, I wonder, um, I wonder why these people think like that. And someone suggested, oh, go and have a listen to this guy debate Jordan because he just absolutely wipes his ass with him or something and that's the beauty of the world is that there's two sides to everything there are people that completely agree with one way of life and there's complete people that you know completely disagree there'd be people that would have started listening to keep the change and gone this guy's an idiot there was there was someone that said to me the fact that you fly in New Zealand and that you think you should support them just absolutely disgusts me and uh, they're a fucking monopoly that rip everyone off and blah, 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 and I can't take you seriously when you reference them and you keep the change. And I'm like, hey, you know, fair enough. Uh, someone said, oh, the fact you're into horse racing and gambling and stuff, you're just a, an absolute disgrace. And I just said, yep, cool, please unsubscribe, unfollow everything. Just remember, you know, um, to try and add some value to the world yourself. So, yeah, it's, it's weird uh, how people act and when they think they need to, to tell you about their um, their side of things. But one thing that I've been taught and that I always notice now too is that when people reveal their identity, they say as a. Now now that I tell you this, you'll never be able to unsee this. If you go on social media and you see an argument, watch for it. Every sort of fourth comment will be someone being like as a. And that's them revealing their identity and everything that they stand for. So as a middle-aged male, as a Christian as a um, refugee, as a female who's been uh, paid less than males, like people will just show you their entire identity within like five or six words. And just keep an eye out there for that. It's very, very interesting. And it's a great way to avoid arguments as well. So if you're going to have a conversation with a group of people and all of a sudden someone comes in and goes, well, as a daughter of a farmer, I would like to say, and you just go, okay, okay, there's a high chance that I'm not going to convince this person, I'm not actually going to have a productive conversation with them, I'm not going to be able to help them develop themselves, they're just going to be tied to their identity, and that's their thing, you know, is it worth your time, is it worth your anger, your your um, investment of energy, and think about those things. Now, some people would then say to me, well, Luke, that's, that's very selfish of you, because you're just thinking about yourself, and I often say to people, hey, look, fuck whoever's going to be in government, I don't care if it's Labour, National, the Greens, some Purple Party, Act, whatever, the Māori Party, like I don't even know who all the parties are, I don't even care, because at the end of the day, I vote for myself every election, and I get out there and I hope that I'm taking actions to move myself forward, and someone said, that's really, really selfish, and I'm like, shit, I, I kind of thought it was really good advice, and they're like, well, you're not thinking about anyone else but yourself, and I'm kind of like, well, 
okay, I can see where you're coming from, but then I go, well, is that true? Because, again, why am I sitting here on a Sunday giving back my time and my education to help other people be better or to achieve something and go, well, actually, that's not true. I'm not just thinking about myself, but I can see how they've come to that conclusion. They're going, well, actually, you you don't really care who's in government because you, you just think, well, as long as you're going well, then everything's all good for you, but what about the people you could be voting for? And that kind of makes sense. I can see where they're coming from, and I'm happy to have my, my thinking tested um, as I go because it makes me stronger and makes me more well-rounded. And I think we're moving into a world where people don't want to be like that. They just want to be on one side or the other, uh, or they have to protect the, the party that they voted for. And it's just so boring and punishing and actually... I think it just stops people from actually making any progress of their own because they're so tied up in this other shit. But anyway, uh, one of the other things that I invested in which taught me a really good lesson was I went to a conference and I learned about selling on Amazon. And a mate of mine said to me, mate, I'm fucking keen to have a crack at this. Should we go halves in this course? And I paid $4,000. So he paid, no, I paid two. So he paid two and I paid two. And we got into it. And I realized very quickly, I was like, wow, this is way more technical. And Well, not technical, it was just a lot more work than I realized. And what I'd been learning previously was about focus. And what I realized is that I'd had another shiny object come in front of me, and I thought, I can, I can do this, I can do the 80% of this. And then I realized to do it really, really well, it needed 110%. But Luke was focused on school rebates, he was focused on Next Advisory, and I thought, fuck, this has been a costly lesson. This has been a $2,000 shiny object lesson that's come into my life and I've thought, wicked, I can develop myself, I can make some more cash, I'll pay for this course, I'll go through and I'll do this and I'll make it all back. And I stopped and I went, Luke, you're not focusing on the things that are more important. School rebates, next advisory, you're, you're, you're trying to start another business here, do you really need to? And I said to my mate that I brought it with, I said, look, mate, I'm going to be honest with you. I reckon this is going to be one of those uh, sunk costs for me where I go, fuck, I spent two grand on this and I, 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 I cannot follow this through purely because it's a distraction from the thing that is bringing me the most fulfillment, the most joy and the most potential of making a financial stable income over time. And he said, mate, I completely agree with you. Uh, it's embarrassing that a couple of smart guys, here's a lawyer, I'm an accountant, fell for this. And it's not that the product wasn't good, very, very good product, I'd recommend it to anyone, but I won't tell you what it was, uh, but it was basically a training course of how to get started on, on Amazon and how to uh, make, a sh- you know, make a product and sell it into whatever country, and it just took you from A to B start to finish, and this was years ago, uh, so it's not just something recent, and we sort of said, shit, like we nearly, we nearly pulled ourselves away from the things that we're supposed to be focusing on, that's our businesses that were already starting to, to go well, he was ahead of me as well, so he was already doing well and hiring people, and I just said, mate, I think it will be better to focus our time on the things that we know have upside, and that's something that I've had to learn to get better at too, is where to focus my time and energy, because being an idea ideation type person, I can come up with a business idea every day, and think, oh, should I have a crack at that? And or a type of client wants to talk to us and it's just like, no, you know, no, that no longer is an ideal client because it's going to be complex or it's going to take a heap of energy or they can't afford it or whatever, uh, or it's an area I just know nothing about. No, no, Luke, no, Luke, no, Luke, no, Luke. That's something I've had to get better at telling myself, focus on the things that I know I'm really good at, where I can add a stack of value and it's going to be um, a, a way for us to be able to keep moving forward, keep moving fast, and keep the wheels on the bus turning quickly. So avoid the pitfalls of shiny objects wherever you can, and figure out why you're so keen on new ideas or jumping from one thing to the other. Focus is something that I've had to learn so much about, and that is a way to develop yourself. Some people do it and learn it via meditation or by sticking to something. 75 hard, I think, is kind of like the latest thing that people are grabbing onto. Really, I think these are actually just ways for people to learn discipline or to learn focus. I was very lucky that as a young fella, I went to a school where discipline was drilled into you. If the teacher walked into the room, you stood up, you showed them respect, you called them sir, you called them madam. You turned up to PE with your equipment. If you didn't, you're off. Fuck off for an 8K run, never do that again. You forget your speedos, great. Here's a bright pair, you can swim in those. Um, you talk back to a teacher, sweet, you can go and sit outside. Um, one time I was really cheeky, okay, great, you can go and explain that to the the high, the, the rec door of the school. Or you want to be smart to a year 13 person, sweet, there's a smack around the, 
the the face. Uh, you don't get a lot of that shit these days. And really, you know, I think discipline is something, discipline and focus is something that's really, really hard to teach. So if you're lacking two of those things, you need to figure out what you can put into your life to allow you to uh, basically use those to your advantage. You'll hear from some of those stories in my early 20s and before that, I, I'd lost some of that discipline. And, nah, fuck saving, don't worry about that, I don't need to do that. Oh, I'll just go out another weekend, or oh, yeah, I'll go on that trip even though I can't afford it, oh, I'll put it on my credit card, because I'd given back some of that discipline and the focus. And so it wasn't until I started to really dig in with my business side of things that I learned, wow, my high school taught me all of this shit. I just forgot, and I just let it go. And there's that great saying that the student will appear, no, the teacher will appear when the student is ready. And there have been people that I've gone back to and gone like, wow, you were, you were trying to teach me years ago and I just wasn't ready and I appreciate that you were trying to help me uh, but I just wasn't ready for the information right then. Your parents and my parents are a classic example of that. They're trying to help you with things and we go, nah, nah, we know better. Fuck that, we're bulletproof. We can figure it all out for ourselves and you know, have the humility to go back to them at some stage and go, well, I, I really thank you for trying to show me what I now understand because at the time, I wasn't ready for that content, I wasn't ready for that information, for that education, and basically uh, I ignored you, and you were the right teacher, and you still are, but uh, I you know, I neglected you because I wasn't ready, and uh, I wasn't the student. Now that said, also, be careful what your uh, upbringing, your parents, your teachers, the people you hang around teach you, because sometimes you will need to outgrow those lessons. As an example, uh, my mama, I love her to bits, and I have this convo with her all the time, but she'll say, why are you working so hard? I'm like, because I'm trying to start a business from absolute scratch. Oh, you're burning yourself out. I'm like, oh, well, I'm not a candle, and I'm not running on fucking petrol, so I'm not sure what that even means. But you start to hear these things because people will bring those sayings to you and you'll start to go, oh shit, you know, what, what does that actually mean? But, you know, are you looking out for yourself? Have you had experience of burnout? Um, you know, let's, that, that's a whole topic in itself. But, um, you know, don't get too rich. You'll get, you'll get greedy. What? You know? Um, what else is there? Oh, um, you know, sa- save every penny. Oh, save your money. Well, if you've been saving money at the moment... It doesn't work because inflation is chewing it. It's killing it. So 100 grand at the start of the year, at the moment, it's worth about 94 grand at the end of the year. So if you save your grand, your 100 grand, put it in the bank, the very hard thing to do in New Zealand anyway to save 100K, at the end of the year, you've got 94K. Well, save your money. Well, fuck, actually, that didn't work. So what I noticed as well is that I started to develop myself and grow. I needed to accept that it wasn't just the people in my current circle that had the answers that I need. So again, going back to the start, I'd seek out people that have been there, that have done it before, and you can now do this on YouTube, and you can do it via podcast, and you can go and find out from them what it takes to achieve things. And it might be someone that started a business from scratch. Okay, well then let's go and find out what lessons that they've got and what are they saying? And what are they saying about things like balance and burnout and working hard? Um, you know, because you're the, the vehicle that you get into or the goals that you're trying to achieve, they, they require different mindsets. Now, if I tried to uh, be a millionaire with a $10,000 or $40,000 a year mindset, do you think I'd get there? Do you think it would work? No. So you've got to go back and you've got to uninstall some of these lessons or hard wirings that you've had so that you can reinstall some of the education and the methodology and the things you need to be thinking about to ensure you can become the person that you want to become. Now this I, this is a topic that I could go on about for hours and hours and it's just because I've done so much different stuff. Some of it's been really good, some of it has been uh, an absolute waste of time like paying a couple of grand to, to learn how to sell via, uh, to build an Amazon business. The Strengths Finder stuff for instance, that probably didn't even cost, well it would have cost me two grand by the end of it and uh, that's been life changing for me. My sleep ring for instance, I think might have cost me 600 bucks. Personal trainer, fuck that's been expensive and then give me bloody these supplements that I should be taking and stuff. It's all almost become like a little bit too much um, and so I'm sort of like oh where do I go with that, how long do I continue that for but I love the accountability that it brings me so that's worth it too but um, you know, you'll do things that don't necessarily work for you then you'll do things that do so just try different things and figure out ways that you can develop yourself the ultimate game is that you're trying to become more valuable so that you can earn more or uh, yeah basically earn more and earn you get to create the definition of so I don't just mean you get to earn more money it could be oh someone just hit the house with a golf ball sure um, I'm a house sitting again as per the uh, the yesterday's lesson now 
earning could be earning more free time or more friends or it could be that you're only working four hours a day. Whatever earning looks like to you, you've got to try and develop yourself to become the person that you want to be. That's a hard thing to do. You've got to then start with actually figuring out who it is that you want to be. But investing in myself has been one of the most valuable things that I've done and I continue to do and you'll hear so many people talking about why that's important. If you're not doing anything Start simple. Just start doing some personality profiles. Start reading a book every week. Start writing down what you're grateful for. Start practicing some of the things that you're good at. If you're really good at drawing, just draw more. Do more art. Like I always say to people, if you're talented at something, like please work on that because, you know, I would love to be able to just make a painting. My girlfriend, for instance, she can just draw shit. I'm like, whoa, what the fuck? Like, how do you draw a dog? And I'm like, do do some more of that. Or uh, she like water skiing, for instance. I'm like, what are you what are you doing sitting around? I'm like, go and do that. Like, let's figure out how you can do that around here, and encourage people to go and do the things that they're good at because that's what we need in the world. Is more people doing the shit that they're good at. But first, it starts with figuring out what we're good at and then developing that as we go. That has been an epic 41 minutes for you. I've enjoyed bringing that to you. I've probably missed a whole heap of things. Like I say, I didn't take any notes, but uh, get started. Remember that it is so important to continue to develop yourself and keep learning. That's how we end up earning even more because we become more valuable. See you tomorrow.